it here. This is our second performance of the night shift before Christmas. We have had an incredible um, and joy, joyful time uh, practicing uh, our young, it's very, probably the youngest uh, group, troupe I've ever worked with, and they have just been extraordinary. The songs in this show will move your heart, they'll make you laugh, they'll make you just smile. But we want to share the story, the Christmas story, tonight. So often Christmas is about so many things, and you could miss the manger. We don't want to miss Jesus this Christmas. And for, for you coming here, I know that you won't. You won't miss it because it's an incredible joy, incredible love, and incredible music. So we thank uh, the families and the kids that have practiced long and hard together. And uh, we're just excited to present to you tonight, the night before Christmas. But before we do that, I'd like to just pray for us and for our Christmas that we're waiting for. God, we just thank you for the great love, for the visitation of the angels, that you came from heaven to earth to declare and announce and bring your son to give us good news to give us salvation, to give us hope, and to give us peace. Despite the circumstances in the world 2,000 years ago and even today. And so we want to focus on the manger. We want to prepare for Christ coming again in our lives, in our hearts, in our homes. God, we just want to make room for you tonight. Would you speak to us? Would you touch us? And may we then share the good news, the good news and the great joy of Christmas. Baby Jesus, born in a manger, on this holy, holy, sacred night. Lord Jesus, we love you. We bless you. And we are grateful. In Jesus' name, always we pray. Amen. I present to you now the night <coughs> shift before Christmas.
a great jingle. I know, right? Except, what's a jingle? So we send the dishwasher guys out to walk around town with aprons full of spoons, the jingle of the storm, and when people come to see where the sound is coming from, they'll sing that song. It's a new thing they call advertising. So, uh, what will be, booth or counter? Booth, booth is fine, but I have one question. Shoot. Okay, what's a falafel? What's a falafel? I'm from out of town. Way out of town. Just asking. A falafel is a little taste of heaven fried up in a ball about this big. It's everyone's favorite food around these parts. How's that different from a hush puppy? A what? That's a weird name for a food. Sure is. Better luck if your pet's where this guy comes from. Hey, who are you? She's the new waitress, though. Her name's Lydia. I told you I was going to hire a new girl. So I train her on the night shift so she can slide into the day shift. Okay, Lydia, try to follow me in this. Most of the people who eat in the falafel house are regulars in here all the time, so make sure you take care of them. Okay, I'll try. Any here tonight? Oi, the census is going to break my back. Here's one right now. We're full and overflowing and everyone wants extra blanket. Just sit. I won't sit. I'm too worked up. That's fine. You can stand. Nothing for me. I think I'll just sit. Well, you can sit. I'll just have a coffee, thanks. <laughs> that was Hala. Miss Hala to you. She manages to step us in. She's a bit stressed out with the census. What? Dude, those people over there, they're the night shift workers at the clay pot factory down the road. What do they make? About 30 shekels an hour, but that's before overtime. <laughs> no, I mean, what is made at the clay pot factory? Seriously? They make clay, pots, high-tech stuff. They convert heat from fire and water into modern kitchen vessels. Wow. <laughs> hi, Milo. Hi, Milo. Good to see you all. Look, the shepherds are back. <laughs> Funny, though. Never heard that before. This lunch is the night shift shepherds at the fields east of town. They've been coming here for years. You must know them well. Yep, almost like my own kids. That's Skip, Scam, Biff, Buffy, Tammy, and Tommy. There sure are a lot of them. And that's only half. The rest are still abiding in the fields, keeping watch over the flocks by night. They'll be in later. Okay, here's your first table. May I take your order? That's not how you do it. What do you have? I'll have a glass of chocolate milk and a bowl of shark wheat. Okay, Mr. Mo, can I please have one? One minute, you're in a bale of hay. Mo, I see a man on the menu. Is it real manna or that manna substitute stuff? Well, Biff, only God has the real manna recipe, but we have the best manna humanly possible. And Tommy, what do you have?
really going to stop being open all night and do away with the night shift? Well, if now that the town is full to the gills for the census and the night travel has died down, I'm closing her down for the night. But, Mo, why? Just not worth staying open for a few night owls. But, Mo, no. what do we do then? And you know we have to work nights, and this is the only place to eat. No, there's that new place in the south of town. You mean awful for lawful? That place is, well, awful. One more piece of horrible news. Should have seen it coming. Lydia, <laughs> meet terrible Tommy, the most pessimistic person in the world. Everything is bad news to Tommy. I'm not a pessimist. I'm just a realist. Watch this. Hey, I can't believe how great business has been because of the census. Are you kidding me? It's turned the whole city upside down. The streets are crowded, the sheep are stressed out, and anybody that doesn't have a hotel can just forget it. See? Why is there a census again? Caesar wants to count of everyone in his kingdom, so everyone is expected to see that they were born so they can take account. So Caesar can take more of my money. A couple got out at the beginning of the shift, and the girl will be about nine months pregnant. Never seen that in Bethlehem before. Well, you must feel so lucky to live in Bethlehem. Why do you say that? Because the scripture says the Messiah will be from Bethlehem. Ha, a prophet wrote that hundreds of years ago. Seems like that's not likely to happen. I gotta get back to work. I believe God could send the Messiah whenever he wants, even tonight. The Messiah tonight in these dark streets? I doubt it. You're a dreamer. <laughs> Right away. That's all right. I can read. 
Sorry, I was distracted. What's up with you today? You don't usually make mistakes. I guess I've just been thinking about that couple that came in at the beginning of the shift. The girl who's gonna have a baby? That's the one. I'm just worried sick about her. At least they're not hungry anymore. Lol threw so much free food on their table, they might not be hungry for a whole week. Aw, oh, Flo, you're such a softie. I suppose I am. Tell anybody don't break your arm. I just hate to think of them outside the dark all alone. You don't even know them. Why does it bother you so much? Our current king here of rules with an iron fist. I think one day when God's Messiah is born, he'll be gentle and caring. Gentle? Jeremiah said he'll be a conqueror. He'll defeat nations and assemble all the scattered people of Judah. He's going to be a warrior. Warrior? Isaiah says he'll be a judge with the spirit of knowledge and understanding and of the fear of the Lord. I believe he'll be a priest because Isaiah says that righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness is sash around his waist. Regardless of what he's going to be like, the Messiah will be from here, and he will be from the line of David. He will be a king. But is he really going to be born here in Bethlehem? Micah says, But you, Bethlehem, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come one for me who is ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old, from ancient times. It's been hundreds of years since that was written. Why are you so sure it's still true? Because God promised it, and God always keeps his promises. <laughs> If the Messiah were born right here in Bethlehem, I would drop everything to see him. Flo, you're about to drop everything on that poor lady from the Beth Western. Oh my, very sorry. Here's your MLT, my list of marriage sandwich. Enjoy. Whoa! 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 Whoa. What is that? It's as bright as day out there. Not sure what it is, but it can't be good. It's coming from over the shepherd's field. What in the world? Or out of this world. Did you see the light? Yeah, yeah we, we did. did. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm a little worried about that young couple sleeping in my stable. You know, the ones you saw earlier, the young lady who's soon to have a baby. You put them in the stable? Only sleeping there tonight. You know, we're over book, but we're supposed to have a checkout tomorrow. Maybe I should go check on them. These bright flashes of light may frighten them. You know, I've been thinking about that sweet young lady all day. Maybe it's your name, and her husband is Joseph, came all the way from Nazareth. That's a long way from home. Hope they can get back before the little boy or girl shows up. That reminds me, she said the strangest thing when I asked her if she hoped for it to be a boy or a girl. What did she say? She just looked at me, smiled, and said, it's a boy. What? Maybe she's just hoping? 
No, she said, she said an angel came down and told her that she'd give birth to a son. So it was all part of God's plan. those kids a proper place to stay. And it would be so wonderful if I could get my pizza sometime soon. <laughs> Lydia, they want to start cleaning tables. Mill and sister are going to close in just a bit. You're really going to do it? Nothing important ever happens here at night in Bethlehem. We don't make a dime. It's time to stop kidding ourselves. Whoa! Did you see that? Whoa, whoa, whoa! What's gotten into you, shepherds? You almost knocked out my doors. This isn't like you. This really isn't like you. Did you see it? See what? The light, Mo, the light. It was angels. You saw angels? Didn't you? They were everywhere, and an angel talked to us. Angels talked to you? I was terrified at first. <laughs> and they didn't just talk, they praised God, and it was loud. The angel said, do not be afraid. Because I already was. He said, for I bring you good news that will cause great joy. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is the Messiah, Christ the Lord. You saw this? You're joking, right? Not joking. Tom, you're always the guy who gives the bad news. What's the bad news about this? This time, Mo, there's no bad news. This is the best news I've ever heard.
right, shepherds, what are you up to? What I say? What are you talking about? Oh, don't act so innocent. I was sound asleep when I heard some commotion coming from my stable. Looked out the window and saw you guys skipping and hollering. I knew you were up to no good and followed you straight here. Holla, sit down, take it easy. I won't sit. I want to know what these troublemakers are doing in my stable. Well, this Holla, there was this angel. Angel. And he told us that the Savior is born here tonight. Savior? And now we can find him wrapped in clothes, lying in the manger. And sure enough, we found him in your stable. In my stable. I think I need to sit. <laughs> After all these years of waiting, God has kept his promise. The Messiah, the Savior, has been born here tonight. He is Christ the Lord. Good news of great joy for all people. So Mary's baby in my stable, our Messiah sent from God for us, we have to go see him. Well, look at the time. We've got to clean and lock up first. It's almost time to close. Never mind that, Mom. We've got to go. I think I need to sit. You are sitting hollow. What you need to do is get up and come with the new baby. Mo, are you coming? I want to see the Messiah. Yeah, let's go. Besides, 
We can't abandon our customers to the awful falafel. So we're going to be open for the night shift? Absolutely. Who says nothing important ever happens here at night in Bethlehem? Falafel's on the house, at the Falafel House. We've got good food, good service, and good news. I think we made it into a jingle. Yay!
right? Yeah. It's so good. I'm sitting there in my seat and my heart is just like beating out of my chest and I want to stand up and like worship or something to those songs. To hear like them singing and speaking scripture from Micah and Isaiah and his word, like how powerful is that? And I just feel like, I, I was just telling Matt, I was like, we need to do something Christmassy because I just don't feel Christmassy yet. And like this was it, like this was Christmas. This has brought Christmas. And I want you to know, like, you, Olivia was watching you, my little girl right there, and I said to her, are you going to do this next year? And she said, yes, but I'm watching those big kids so I can get brave. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And that's what you do when you say, do not fear, God keeps his promises. That's true, and that's for you. So, like, as you grow up, remember that. And for us, right, like, doesn't that remind you? God keeps his promises. He sent baby Jesus to earth for us at Christmas time, and it changed everything. And I just think you guys, like, you need to bow one more time. You need to, like, eat lots of cupcakes and brownies and do whatever you want. And your parents better say, yep, you can do whatever you want tonight. Because you're fantastic. So, so good. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, guys. Let's pray one more time, okay? Dear God, thank you so much, man, for these kids and their giftedness, for their spirit and their joy. God, for the time that they've invested in learning these lines and bringing Christmas to us. It's so important, it's so contagious, it's so magical that you sent a baby here to be our king and that they know it and that because they know it and sing it, we can be reminded and feel it. God, help us to hang on to that Christmas that we just felt. Help us to remember that's what it's all about, Lord. And may these kids never forget that Christmas is all about your son, baby Jesus, and your love for us that you didn't want to leave us in the darkness, that you sent light, that bright, bright light at Christmas time. God, we celebrate you and your son and these beautiful, precious children tonight. And bless this awesome food we're about to eat. It's in your name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. Amen. We are going to sing happy birthday to Holly. Uh, they brought a cake. Uh, Holly, Holly. Holly, Holly. Holly, Holly. Holly, Holly. Holly, Holly. Holly. Oh, we've got two Holly. Jolly Holly. This is your birthday, Holly. Today. Oh, what? We have a lot in common. Oh, we have oh nice. It's just amazing. And Jesus. We have that in common. Too. So, again, thank you all for coming. We're going to sing happy birthday to you all, and then they're going to get out of their costumes and they're going to eat, so they're going to rush to the lawn, so um, we're going to sing happy birthday to our Hollies, okay? Ready? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Holly and Holly, happy birthday to we do want to take a picture. Nikki's really gonna really quick so get a picture. So if you want to get over there, take a 